and the next speaker will be speaking with us on a pre-recorded video. Uh, it's uh, Dr. Ki Yul Chung, who is a lifelong fighter for Korean reunification and anti-imperialist causes generally. He is editor in chief of the 21st century and a visiting professor at a number of universities, including Beijing Tsinghua University, uh, Tokyo's Korea University, and Pyongyang's Kim, Il, uh, Kim Il Sung University. Um, earlier, he was also a visiting professor at the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences. Dr. Chung was born in Korea, left to do graduate studies in the United States, and then was based in the United States for about 25 years while earning his MA and PhD degrees and playing a major role in, progressive, in the progressive Korean community. He returned to Korea in 2005 as adjunct professor of the Methodist University and senior lecturer at Hanshin University, both in Seoul, but then moved to Beijing to take up academic posts there. Dr. Chung was a key organizer of the 1989 International Peace March for the Korean Reunification that aimed to march from the north, uh, northernmost to the southernmost points of the Korean Peninsula, but was prevented from crossing the demilitarized zone by U.S. occupation forces and by the South Korean authorities, as well as the South, uh, sorry, the Korea Truth Commission's International War Crimes, Crimes Tribunal held in New York in 2001, that is to say, he was a key organizer of that. Um, with a background in religious philosophy, Dr. Chung's book include The Dong Chuck Concept of God, Heaven, Religion and Social Transformation, which by presenting Dong Chuck, the origin of indigenous Korean Chondoist religion, is a case study of religion, uh, of, the, of the role of religion in social transformation. It examines why Kore Korean religious and intellectual traditions have been almost non-existent uh, and if existent, distorted, misrepresented, and misunderstood in Western religious and philosophical studies. So let's listen to Dr. Kiel Chang. <clears throat> Warm greetings to brothers and sisters. I'd like to uh, spend most of my time to share these, the, some of the issues I have had in mind. The, for some of you, my background, uh, it's about a little uh, more than 40 year long, my nonstop commitment on Korea issues and beyond uh, the, in terms of the anti-imperialist self-determination, we call the struggle for the anti-imperialist and self-determined struggle. We all have uh, endured, we all have carried out at best. Th these points on the, 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 a brief one page summary I see Korea issue within the context of a five century long history of the unipolar world of imperialism or colonialism. I see Korea issue, uh, they often talked about the US and the North Korea or US DPRK, DPRK, US relations. This relationship, these relations uh, that the humanity, I argue, has never heard about such a, such a struggle. The longest ever, the war still continues, haven't yet finished. The, since 1953, July, the, the, armistice was, the armistice agreement was signed. Still, the, the war between the DPRK and United States hasn't yet finished. And during that time period, the, seven, the the over 75, 76 year long struggle, the US led global war against a, this small divided the Korean, the nation, uh, the, the, the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. If anyone has a, any keen knowledge about the, the DPRK of its struggle, its lone struggle for that many decades, it's some sort of, I, I, I tend to agree with the, the, the claim that the DPRK population say it's a history of nonstop miracles. Under unbelievable, unimaginable nonstop sanctions, the nonstop military threats, which is the nuclear war threats, nonstop the war games 
organized by, led by the Washington in the name of the US South Korea joint military drills and the financial the sanctions and an unimaginable degree of complete the blockade of this small uh, divided nation for the crime of its stance to keep its independence not being subservient and the, to, to keep their own principle of being independent, self-reliant, with the, the anti-imperialist stance that they have never, never dropped, no matter what, on the, on the, whatever the situations they were, they were thrown into, they have never dropped that principle. And for that has been the crime that they have been forced to suffer with how many years, the 60, 70 year long hardship, the food shortage, the energy, and the lack of energy sources. And as we know, the, till this day, that nation has not been allowed to the, the so-called free trade with its neighbors. As we the, know, uh, since the end of, since the end of 1991, when the Soviet was collapsed, Soviet collapsed and the dissolution of the, the Eastern European, the socialist bloc, the DPRK has been singled out. I've been to DPRK since 1989. Uh, my trips to as a, as a, the, the reunification movement activist and later time, I've been teaching it at Kim Il-sung University since 2015, while I've been teaching at Tsinghua University in Beijing, China with my own eyes over 100 times visiting the North Korea, I think I know how hard, how difficult it has been the, the time they have the, survived and without losing their the right to self-determination, without losing their in, the independence, uh, without ever giving up the principle of the anti-imperialism. So, Having said that, my question uh, came into this, uh, this, the, the, this point that I have kept since 1991 when the Soviet was gone, when the, the European, the socialist bloc is also dissolved. How come that small, such a small nation, lack of energy sources and the, the, the food shortage, as they call it in Korean language, ilsim dangyol, meaning uh, the, the whole nation is united under the leadership of the party and the head of the party. They call the head of the party and the Korea Workers Party and the people, the, these three, the tripartite, the undeterred the unity, they call Il Shim Dan Gyeol, uh, with the successful third leadership succession has been completed on the, at the moment, the party chairman, Kim Jong-un, uh, without having that undeterred the leadership, keeping, starting from the, the late president, Kim Jong-un, late the chairman, the Kim Jong-il, they are, they are political, they are national, they are socialist, anti-imperialist policy has never been negotiated for the sake of their own the survival. And, and I find an answer to my question, how they could have survived on, the, on the, the, such a complete isolation and no hands from anybody when particularly Russia and China, they themselves are uh, the struggling to come up with their own uh, the stance and um, it's a great for the sake of the humanity, not only for the, the DPRK, that uh, under the, the president, the Xi Jinping at the moment, uh, since March 2018, the Xi Jinping the, has solidified, in my own knowledge, that it's like almost the same, similar, the political leadership style in the DPRK. And under his strong leadership, and China has, I call it, was able to regain it's, it's the anti-imperialist and socialist stance. 
and, and not anymore negotiating that principle uh, with United States or anybody around the globe to negate that principle of independence, self-determination, and anti-imperialism. Uh, let me focus on the another point I have um, been able to understand better about the Putin, the, the Russia, the new Russia under the President Putin uh, since his third term and now fourth term, how the, for example, Russia has been able to regain its sense of national dignity. The, 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 since Soviet was dissolved, the, the pride of great Russian nation lost its the sense of pride, national national dignity. It, 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 I believe that under the Putin's leadership, the great Russian nation was able to regain, rebuild uh, their, their national pride in terms of independence, independent policy, not negotiating anymore their independent the, the national policies based upon, I would argue, national the anti-imperialism. And how uh, that I learned about the uh, President the Putin in his early the years of leadership, 2000, the July 2000, the Putin made the first time ever visit to Pyongyang to have uh, the, the lead meeting with the late chairman Kim Jong-il. And I was able to obtain some documents about that visit and their dialogue. Uh, and, and then since 2015, September 2015, the President Assad invited the official the invitation of Russian military uh, emergency support for them to survive under the assault the led by US, Britain, and plus Israeli, uh, the, the, the proxy war against independent sovereign nation of the Syria and since 2015, the September, the, the, the world has learned about the, what kind of nation the Russia under Putin is all about. And I argue, it seems what I see in Putin's leadership, it's, it's like a, since the, under the Kim Jong-il leadership, they, they put the, their, their, the strategy called the military first, politics they call or military first revolution and no matter how hard their economic the, the situation they never stop to build their own the independent self-defense power and having acquired the their own independent national defense force i mean now the, the nuclear the nuclear deterrent power they are now able to engage with any nation uh, without losing their, their self-determination independence. And so with DPRK, China, uh, Russia, I call it tripartite, the nuclear the anti-imperialist, the, the, the nation's alliance is, is the, the, the single most important in, the, in this 21st century to keep the world away from the global nuclear war. Because of these three, independent, sovereign, anti-imperialist nuclear powers together as a, as, a, as a political strategic alliance to deter US aggression, the world is safe from the, the disastrous global the nuclear war, the possibility. So having said all, after 40 year long, the, the Korea war and the, and the international peace and just issues, the, 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 the commitment I come to a conclusion, I have become more optimistic. I am become ever more optimistic, but at this particular moment, with the, the indispensable role of these three nations, DPRK, China, and Russia, plus though none the nuclear power, but the nations like the Iran, the Syria, and the, the Hezbollah together, uh, together with the Russia the, as a nation, the save, the, the 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 Syria from being taken and by the this the the, the, the international international uh, the military aggressions against the Syria. What about the brothers and sisters in Cuba? What about the brothers and sisters in uh, Venezuela? 
in Nicaragua, in Bolivia, around the globe, any nation that which try to stand on its own feet without losing their self-determination and independence and trying to keep their sovereign, national sovereignty uh, being challenged by US-led, the imperialist aggression still continues. But uh, the, again, I am I'm ever more hopeful, I'm ever more optimistic and grateful for the, the national leadership of the China, Russia, Iran, and other nations together with the brothers and sisters in DPRK, the northern part of Korea. Again, I'm honored to be part of this meeting and, and I hope to uh, rejoin you in, a, in, in some other occasion. Uh, thank you for the organizers and thank you friends such as long time ago, the brother Keith Bennett in London. Thank you. <laughs>